Creation of the Universe Science shows a number of ways that the universe could have come into existence, but none of them seem to require a god or a creator. But wait, how did all the conditions for just such an event come about? Perhaps there is room for God in the equation after all. This video unites the very latest scientific facts, which we will accept as far as they go, with the very common belief that there is some sort of God and that there is some sort of reason that we exist. We will get into the science of creation in just a moment. But first, we need to understand a few basic concepts about God and what his purposes could be and see how that applies to the interesting universe that science is beginning to uncover. Science has pointed out how virtual particles can seemingly come out of nothing, and that leaves us to wonder. Can science explain it all? So if science seems able to explain much of the world and its existence, we need to ask, is it necessary to even refer to God? Can science explain everything? The answer is no. There is so much beyond what physical science can answer. Important stuff like the reason for the universe and why it seems so perfectly arranged for life in general, and human life in particular. And of course the biggie, why are we here? And what is our purpose? As well as the related questions of what is right and what is wrong. Science by itself has no answer to these sort of questions. But it is interesting that once you know the reason for existence, it becomes easier to see where science applies to a modern religion. Let's take a rational look at the purpose of the universe. Is there a reason for the universe? Is there a purpose? Rather than assume at first there is no purpose, let's instead take a look at what the purpose might be based on what is actually happening. Let us suppose that the universe is doing what it should, that its purpose is what it does. So what could be the scientific explanation for the universe? Consider this. If you asked a biologist what is the purpose of life, he would look at how life seems to expand to fill every available niche. He would look how midges grow as larvae underwater for seven weeks, and then transform into pupae, and then emerge in a wing form to mate for about three days, and then lay eggs in the water, and then die. He would look at salmon that are born in freshwater streams and swim out to sea and live and grow for a number of years, and then return to the stream that they were born in, and then mate and spawn. Then after spawning, they die within a few days, fertilizing that stream and creating a nutrient-rich environment for the new infant salmon that are about to hatch. Everywhere he looks, he would see that life forms are growing to sexual maturity for a long time. Then they mate and spread their seed, and then they die. And he would have to answer that the purpose of life, based on what actually happens, the purpose of life is more life. Life begets life. And often, every action seems to lead up to reproduction, and then BAM! It's lights out. The organism gets old and dies off real fast, like it had fulfilled its purpose. The purpose of life seems to be more life. Now, if you ask the astronomer what the purpose of the universe is, well, most of them will look at you like you were a crazy person. Purpose of the universe, indeed. 
But if you press them to come up with a purpose, many would have to admit that the absurd features of the natural world appear to be all fine-tuned for the biological complexity of advanced life. In other words, everything from the mass ratios of atomic particles, the number of space dimensions, to the cosmological parameters that rule the expansion of the universe, and the formation of galaxies, as well as the proper age of the universe that allows time for the elements to be developed in giant stars and blown out into nebula, which allows other stars and planets to be developed from the proper mix of elements that actually allow life. These other elements, particularly carbon and oxygen and nitrogen, were not in the original creation, the Big Bang. And now, after a few billion years, it now turns out to be that they have developed in exactly the right proportion needed to create the molecules of life. If any of the physical parameters, such as the mass of quarks or the timing of the early rapid expansion, were off even a fraction from the values that they are, it would be a different universe, unable to form life at all. All these facts, which are recently discovered, tends to lead many astronomers to admit that the apparent purpose of the universe seems to be as a cradle for advanced life forms. This makes you ask, where does all this apparent fine-tuning come from? Is it the manifestation of a plan for the universe? Is it an arrangement by a superior will to prepare the way for complex creatures? Science can't tell us. It can only point the way to the possibility that there is a reason for the existence of the universe. But we can learn that reason by listening to truth as it is revealed by Latter-day Prophets and we can follow a tried and proven path of determine the truth of those revelations which is fully explained in the section on truth in my book listed in the end of this video. A true religion will contain all truth, including the truths of modern scientific discoveries. Whatever God is, you can certainly say God is truth. A true teaching of God's word, his gospel, will include all truth. The problem has been that in the past, too many religions were built on incomplete understandings of all the truth. This is a major stumbling block for a scientist trying to reconcile the facts that science is showing him with the regular teachings of most religions. We need a more modern religion that can tie the two together. There is not a different truth for spiritual matters and physical matters, but they should all be part of one whole. They appear different because physical rules and the methods of science can't yet measure the spiritual. It is the general view that science is anti-God. This is because science is based on physical measurements, which have nothing to say about the spiritual. Because science can't measure or even detect spiritual things, many scientists and non-scientists alike say that proves that the spiritual does not exist. But that isn't true. Science is a method of investigation. Many scientists believe that science has shown that God does not exist. But this is a belief, just like the opposite belief by very religious people. The belief in the non-existence of God is an unscientific belief and is not a provable theory, and as such, it is not verifiable by scientific methods. Mm -hmm.